Now that we have some millwork pieces placed, we can go and start to customize them with the different options that are available inside the components. We will look at this base 45 as an example. To start, I'm going to isolate it in the view so that we can look only at this. There are a number of dimensions and parameters in each component that can be edited, including the dimensions and styles of what we call the features. Every component that has features basically starts at the top and the features are lettered as you move down the object. So in this object, we have feature A, feature B, feature C, feature D, feature E, and then the toe height. This is important because keep in mind the millwork components also have an overall height. This means that not all of these variables can be adjusted. At least one of them has to be incidental or decided by all of the other variables. So if we take type 45 and we look at its type properties, you'll see that there are a number of dimensions. For instance, the height of feature A and C and D and E. Height B is missing. That's because if you were to scroll through, you would find out that height B actually exists, but that it is being determined by the height of everything else. This is a good time to bring up why the type name for this component is 21 by 34 and a half by 24 A. These are just type names, which means they do require some manual coordination. But on the surface, the 21 by 34 and a half by 24 seem to be the width and height and depth of the components, which they are. There is the 21, the 34 and a half is there, and the depth is there. The A, on the other hand, basically means the style of this particular version of the cabinet. The reason that's important is you may have version A, and then you may have version B. If we take one of these components and duplicate it to be type B, now we have two independent types. What we may change about these is the size of different drawers, which would mean that drawer B is now larger. That is the intent behind there being an A or a B in them. You'll also find out later on that this also means we can use tag by category to tag these components so that they don't actually need to be dimensioned in all of the drawings. In addition to changing the feature height and the overall size of the components, there are other things you can change in the type properties as well. You have a feature selector for each feature that exists on the piece, as well as hardware selectors for each piece of hardware as well. If we change a few of them to pull C2, we will see that they will turn into pull C2. Also, each component and each feature has a checkbox for is the hardware on this feature horizontal or not. If you uncheck one of those boxes, you'll see the hardware turn vertical. In this case, the vertical hardware doesn't fit, so you'll see that it's not working. On the second component where we've made uh, the feature be taller, if we try that again, you'll see that the hardware turns vertically. When the hardware is either vertical or horizontal, they use a different set of dimensioned offsets to control the location of the hardware. This will be important if you pick glazed panels to go on as features, as you may want to move the handle off of the glazed portion. So if we change the vertical hardware side offset dimension to one inch, you'll see that the handle moves closer to the perimeter. Obviously this handle also needs to move further down. So we can now say vertical handle top offset dimension and make it four inches. These values will need to be adjusted based on the different sizes that you pick for all of the different units that you have. In this case, I'm going to put the hardware back on pull A1 so that everything looks the same.
If you also want to change the feature type, you can, for instance, change them all to A2, and then you'll see that they will become the raised panels that we saw in the user guide. Currently, the features are all flush up against one another, and that's because the style of the cabinet can be changed as well, but it currently is showing no gaps. We use a parameter called gaps instead of referring to the actual face frame style of the cabinets because the modeling condition in the Revit component is not actually going to change. So there is simply a height gaps parameter and a width gaps parameter. If you would like to simulate or show a half inch in between each door and drawer, you can change both values to half inch. What you'll then get is that all of the doors and drawers will basically retreat uh, the half inch when they are actually adjacent to each other or the quarter inch when they are adjacent to the edge of the component. That's so multiple instances that are next to each other can be showing the correct half inch gap. This also allows you, if you're doing some high-end walkthroughs and visualizations, to simulate cabinets that have doors and drawers that are not actually touching each other so they don't render as one monolithic element. In addition, there are also some instance parameters that may be of use to you, including material finish parameters for the body and the features of the different pieces. There are also instance lock parameters, so that if you would like to simulate feature E being locked, you can check the box and a lock symbol will show up. The locks show up in a generic location just to imply that this feature is actually locked. Not all of the locks will show up exactly where they will need to be, as that will be covered in the specs. Most of this functionality is identical in a lot of the different cabinets so that users are seeing a consistent interface. If you were to change feature A2 on this other cabinet and you were also to put in the same half inch gaps, you would basically get a full series of cabinets that are made to all match each other. Similarly, the same features and the same controls can also be used on the full heights and the upper cabinets as well. So if we go in and change all of our cabinets to A2 features and all of our gaps to half inch, you'll see that all of the cabinets will now match each other. There you go.